So good morning. Um, I'm clinician. I'm not representing any uh, health authority in my country. However, I have a certain experience uh, working with uh, uh, diabetes technologies, and I, I have some experience also from clinical trials with, uh, for example, with implementable uh, G GLP-1 uh, slow le le release uh, devices. I decided to to speak about the, the Baltic paradox, let's say so, because we have a really, I will show it, a really tremendous uh, improvement in, in the economy. However, uh, the re reimbursement system is one of the most thrifty in, in, in Europe, and it's probably not going to improve in the next years, and I will try to explain it uh, a bit from uh, the satirical point of view because uh, this is the first day of the, of the carnival in Dusseldorf, which is supposed to start uh, in one hour or so. And uh, this is the, the, the picture from the last year carnival. But uh, we in Baltics have uh, that in mind. Uh, probably we can be of similar fate as uh, Crimea or, or U Ukraine. Uh, and it, it, it is, you may say, it's... Uh, irrational, because we are members, uh, member states of NATO. Uh, however, uh, our history <clears throat> uh, is telling us that uh, actually nothing is stable in, in this world, and uh, uh, the feast can uh, uh, very rapidly go to famine and then back. So, and, and this uh, reminds me of the human, uh, the regulation of the human metabolism, and there are uh, quite good uh, established um, uh, hypotheses about it. It's about the thrifty genotype, which is uh, selected during the uh, uh, late Paleolithic era, probably more than 10,000 year, years ago, and that means that actually that is quite normal to be in this uh, cycle of. Uh, a sufficient uh, uh, economy, let's say, uh, where, where uh, food is uh, in, in enough, and then uh, in periods when uh, there is a so shortage of, of food and uh, a big threat. So uh, from the socio-anthropologic point of view, uh, I think uh, Baltic states, but uh, I think it re represents the, the way of thinking in, in whole uh, Central Eastern Europe. We expect that this circle will go on and go on and go on. And um, this, this is also shown by several clinical, uh, sorry, sorry, epidemiological studies showing that, uh, for example, in Latvia, we have one of the highest uh, rates of uh, female obesity in Europe. And this relates also that the uh, high uh, prevalence of diabetes are in uh, Baltic states, but also in, in the whole Central and Eastern Europe, and Ukraine and Russia. And estimates are that it's up to 11% uh, in our area. However, there are some other surveys showing uh, more exact data that, for example, in Latvia we have 9.7% uh, of estimated diabetes uh, in Poland, 10.6 in, in uh, Finland, 8.8. Uh, so uh, quite consistent data. Uh, however, we have also a quite good uh, diabetes registry, and it's showing that only 5% of the adult population uh, are registered as diabetic people. So this is... Uh, Back to, to the Baltic paradox, we have really the fastest growth, growth of uh, uh, GDP in the whole Europe. And, and this map um, on, the, on, the, on the right down shows that uh, really if, if you uh, uh, um, calculate the mean uh, growth per, per year, it's more than 3% since uh, since uh, 1995, more than 20 years of continuous, almost continuous growth. Uh, and 
you see in 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 uh, in dark blue uh, those countries we are which are similarly rapidly growing in Europe. However, uh, we have the one of the lowest minimum wages in uh, in Europe in in European Union. So uh, the good news is that uh, in the in the last years. It's increasing. Uh, now in Estonia, it's 390 in 2015, and Latvia 360, and uh, in, in Lithuania 300 euros per month as a minimum wage. But you will agree that this is uh, quite quite low, and uh, I think it, it reflects also why in in our countries um, that. It, uh, it's difficult to afford new uh, diabetes technologies for uh, the average, average patient with diabetes, which uh, has either minimum wage uh, or has a even, even, even less as a pension. So therefore, my, my first conclusion is that uh, we have this thrifty phenotype of the Baltic uh, health care uh, reimbursement system. And uh, this is somehow I irrational, as I said, because uh, the econo economies are growing. However, we are on the last um, uh, um, places uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the percentage of public spending on health. It's between 3.5 and, and 4.5 percent in, in three Baltic states. But uh, we have uh, one of the highest out-of-pocket expenditures as percent of uh, total health expenditure. For example, in Latvia, it's uh, uh, around 35%. In Lithuania, around 27%. In Estonia, 19%. Uh, it leads that uh, we have the system of so-called co-payments for uh, patients. So most of patients should uh, pay out of pocket by themselves for uh, for uh, the the health care uh, services which are in, in richer richer countries are are fully reimbursed and that almost automatically leads to multiple issues in diabetic care which which you can see also from this uh, survey made by, by uh, Health Cons Consumer Powerhouse called Euro Diabetes Index. And in red, those are the countries in, in European Union or, or, and uh, European economic area which have uh, the, uh, the most of uh, healthcare issues in diabetes care. So now, uh, in the last slides, uh, uh, insulin is fully reimbursed in our countries, and uh, uh, ma mainly pre-filled pre pre pens are used. Uh, uh, durable uh, pens are free of charge, but it's provided. They, they, they are provided by by the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, insulin cartridges. Uh, literally disappeared from the market in last years. Uh, regarding devices for blood, blood glucose measurement, they are part, partially reimbursed. There's a, uh, and, and, and those uh, devices are also, or glucometers are uh, provided by the, uh, those companies who are providing glucose test strips. And glucose test strips are partially reimbursed, 90% in Estonia and 75% in Latvia, similarly in Lithuania. Uh, regarding continu can continuous glucose monitoring devices, uh, they are very, uh, those devices are very seldom in our countries and are used mainly in uh, hospitals. For example, in Estonia, there are only 10 uh, CGMs and only five are owned by uh, diabetic patients, according to, to the Health uh, Sick Foundation uh, data. 
and no reimbursement is available and no, no even discussion uh, that the, those devices could be reimbursed. Uh, this leads uh, to great diversity in the glucometer market. For example, uh, the, this, this pie diagram shows the situation in Estonia. Uh, regarding insulin pumps, in Estonia, uh, approximately 50% of children are using insulin pumps, uh, mainly Paradigm, uh, MMT712, uh, and uh, VEO, MMT754, uh, and uh, most of the pumps are uh, sensory, uh, sensor aug augmented. In Lithuania, the situation is similar. However, in Latvia, there is no uh, reimbursement for the, for the insulin pumps, and therefore less than 10% of children are using insulin pumps. And this, in this slide, you see the uh, reimbursement conditions in three countries. In Estonia, for example, uh, Fully uh, insulin pumps and infusion sets and, and glucose sensors are uh, fully reimbursed by, by the government if, if a child is less than uh, five years of age. If if child is, uh, is, is older, then uh, only infusion sets and 12 sensors a year are reimbursed. And indications are brittle pediatric diabetes or... Uh, in people, uh, in children with high HbA1c, despite of uh, education. So, as I said, in Latvia, we don't have any uh, reimbursement for insulin pump users. In Lithuania, all children, uh, irre irrelevant what age they are, uh, getting only infusion sets. But interestingly, in Lithuania, also uh, insulin pumps. Uh, uh, namely infusion sets, are reimbursed in pregnant, during pre the pregnancy and even pregnancy planning. That means 12 months before the pregnancy. And uh, a similar situation is in Poland, as I, as I know. So uh, last few slides about the, the future developments. We... Despite of this thrifty um, phenotype of our reimbursement systems, we are trying really to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to contribute to the future developments as well. And uh, we, we got uh, funding from the Central Baltic Interreg program. And uh, pi uh, we, we had uh, several pilots on self-monitoring and uh, diabetic food care and home care uh, for children. And those are those uh, uh, iPhone-based uh, applications we, we used to really to see how, how it works in, in such conditions as, as we have in, in our countries. And you see that uh, those with a remote control group Devices they they uh, they got improvement in uh, in uh, glucohemoglobin, which was sustainable sustainable up to nine months. So uh, it it seems that uh, really uh, in our conditions uh, this teleconsultation uh, approach uh, works quite well. Then we had also. Uh, uh, teleconsultation on uh, diabetic foot and uh, our conclusions are that uh, remote diabetes monitoring is applicable for young and compliant patients with uh, labile or brittle diabetes but should not be uh, used in elderly people and patients with poor compliance. Uh, for all patients, high motivation and accuracy in records is needed education, high motivation, and ability to give uh, regular feedback is uh, equally expected from physicians. And thank you very much for your attention.